my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and if you are new here, hi, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you're back, as always, welcome back. Today, I'm very excited to get to hop on to share with all of you a post review of one of my recently completed canvases. And this, this kit was part of a rather epic scale comparison project that I've been working on for a few months. And if you're interested in seeing those videos, I'll link to the playlist below, but I really wanted to give this canvas a chance to shine on its own and not just in the context of a comparison and take the time to just share with you about this canvas as it is and the experience of working on it alone. So what I have to share with you today is the very, very beautiful and absolutely stunning Spirit of Flight. Now, this kit is from Diamond Painting Deutschland, which is located in Germany, that's Germany, <laughs> and is, oh my goodness, isn't it beautiful? I just want to look at it for a little while. Now, this was truly a labor of love because this kit was large <laughs> in a lot of ways. So the canvas, the, the drill field size itself, this was 100 by 75 centimeters and had square drills. It's on double-sided adhesive and perhaps most distinct of all, it had 275 colors. <laughs> now I have completed one other Josephine Wall project from Diamond Painting Deutschland. It had 220 or 225 colors. So this scale of project was not totally new to me, but it was still even more colors than the last project I'd done. <laughs> but um, this has been legally licensed from the artist Josephine Wall. And yes, this, this piece has been licensed to more than one company and it is above board. Spirit of Flight is one of Josephine Wall's sort of trademark. It's one of her most well-known pieces of artwork. And so I think it's the sort of thing that is popular to um, turn into diamond painting form. There are also, you can get like puzzles and, and paint my number and all sorts of things that have this really stunning artwork on it. Now, Diamond Painting Deutschland's rendering style is distinct in a lot of ways. I believe that they do computer rendering where the, the end result, like what they're aiming for is more of a direct and almost literal interpretation of Josephine Wall's original artwork. I'm gonna go ahead and pop up Josephine Wall's original artwork of Spirit of Flight here on the screen so you can take a quick look and then see how it looks compared to the completed diamond painting. So this was quite the experience to work on and I really, really, really enjoyed it, honestly. Um, it took quite a lot of time. So I divided this project into eight columns left to right and then in six rows up and down. And so each one of those sections probably took me three to four hours to complete. So that times <laughs> three to four hours times eight times six, it was a long, it was a big project. That's why it, it took me the course of a few months. <laughs> but, it, and it was the kind of thing that I really had to be intentional about and pace myself in because a project of this scale, it's very easy to burn out on because you can't just power through for a quick finish, you will burn out and hate your project. <laughs> I found it to be really important to be in tune with, okay, I'm starting to feel that burnout and like I'm not enjoying working on this piece anymore. And when that was the case, I knew it was time to take a break. So I'd take a couple weeks off, work on some other projects, maybe sneak in a snack or special drill project to get that satisfaction of a finish but I, I definitely recommend pacing yourself. It's a marathon and not a sprint. If you're looking at tackling a large project, particularly one of these Diamond Painting Deutschland kits that has over 200 colors, um, I actually I put together a video when I worked on my last Diamond Painting Deutschland project where I shared tips and tricks and just my experience and my thoughts on 
ways that it'll make working on an epic a large project like this a little bit more manageable i'll be sure to link to that below in the description if you'd like to take a look if you're struggling or just want some additional ideas i hope you'll find that really helpful so I'd like to take a little bit of time and just share about some things that I really loved about this canvas and some ways that I would be interested to see them maybe improve or make changes. Um, so overall, I thought that this was actually a really lovely interpretation of Josephine Wall's original artwork, um, which has such an impressionistic and watercolor effect. And I felt like this piece certainly had that. Um, there were some areas that I felt like got so muddy, got so lost in that, that we really missed out on what actually is in the painting. And I would have been interested to see them maybe go in and try to sharpen up just a little bit so we know that what we're looking at. But there were several areas that I thought just lent itself beautifully to diamond painting Deutschland's rendering style. We'll go down into the canvas in just a moment to take a closer look at some of those areas, but I wanted to first touch on just some of the practical elements about it. So I, I found that for a double-sided adhesive, which honestly, I prefer to work on poured glue canvases, but this double-sided adhesive was a really nice quality. And what made a huge difference for me was to be sure that I, once I unboxed this and had laid it flat and everything, I did choose to leave the solid white cover on it that had come on it, um, but I never rolled it back up. I clipped a heavy duty hanger to it and hung it on a wall in my hallway. So by doing that, I avoided the pitfalls that I had run into with my previous project, which were bubbles and rivers. But by keeping this flat the whole time, I had virtually no trouble with bubbles or rivers or any issues with the glue in general. And I don't really have any complaints about the double-sided adhesive, honestly. <laughs> um, I thought that the canvas was a decent quality. It's a, it's a rather thin canvas um, when you go to touch it, but it's holding the drills beautifully, so I cannot complain about that at all. Um, it's it's laying so nicely when the drills are down. Uh, I really, really loved that this kit came with inventory stickers. And um, let, me, let me go ahead and show you the drills, actually, and some of the examples of the symbols that we were working with. So um, all these stickers that you see, this kit actually came with those, which made kitting up much, much, much easier. Uh, this did come, all the drills came in individual Ziploc baggies. And so if you didn't want to kit up into containers, you certainly don't have to. I liked doing so though, because then I was able to arrange everything according to symbol. So that meant when I was hunting <laughs> for a symbol in the midst of 275 colors, I would know like, okay, I'm looking for an arrow. It's gonna be somewhere in here. And here are all my letters. Here are all my plus signs. Um, you know, you can see how I kind of did a rainbow sorting of this one. So you can see I have those two Elizabeth Ward containers. And then I also use this, which is something I had used with my previous Diamond Painting Deutschland project. There's two layers to it, and these are like the little screw top jars. And again, I organized these roughly by color and symbol. And I, I used my learnings from my past project, and I think that that helped quite a lot. Um, if you're curious to see my whole kitting up video, I did an entire video just on kitting up this project. I'll be sure to link to that, oops, <laughs> link to that below if you're curious to take a look. But I, I was pretty happy with how I ended up doing my storage. So I had, I had drills, um, I had drills left over in every single color. The one thing that I had run into though, is that when I received the kit and when I was kitting up, I was missing one color, but I needed like less than a hundred drills of that color. So I just spent a couple of bucks and ordered some from Diamond Drills USA. And um, that wasn't a big deal. I'm sure if I would have contacted Diamond Painting Deutschland, 
I'm positive that they would have sent me the missing color, but I, I didn't think that was necessary. I just ordered some. <laughs> so um, I thought the drill quality, like I said, I thought it was really good. I had very minimal trash. And overall, I've had a really good experience with Diamond Painting Deutschland's customer service. They have been responsive when I've emailed and their ship time is now pretty fast. They've switched over to a new shipping process. And while it is a bit on the spendy side, um, I was able to get this kit within like a week of ordering. So I appreciated that. <laughs> now I will have to go and take a look. When I was talking with them and had initially ordered this a few months back, they were at the time, I think that they mentioned looking at trying to add an option for um, like US customers to be able to order directly from the website. Uh, like I said, I will double check on that. I think they were also talking about adding an option of translating the website to English um, as an option. But even if they haven't, if you use a web browser like Google Chrome, it should give you the option to translate the website to the language of your choice. And as far as ordering goes, I just emailed them at the email address that was on their website and they were able to send me a PayPal invoice to pay for this. So, all right. Um, things that I was a little bit hesitant about with this kit, aside from rendering, which we're gonna talk about rendering more here in just a moment when we get closer to the canvas, but some of the symbols on the canvas could be a little tricky to read. I thought that the printing was much clearer than my last project, but I felt like maybe some of the symbols I only recognized because I remembered them from last time. They do actually reuse a, a lot of the symbols <laughs> from kit to kit. And I will go ahead and I'll insert a picture here of a close up of a section that I worked on. Um, and so you can see some of the confetti and some of the symbols that I was working on as well. You have to be so careful when working on a project like this to make sure that you are grabbing the correct symbol and color <laughs> because some of them are so similar. But uh, let's go ahead and let's get down closer to the canvas and take a look at some areas. I wanna talk about some um, spots that I thought they rendered beautifully and others that maybe I wasn't totally so sure about. So. Okay, so this corner over here, and actually this kind of, this whole column, I thought was so beautiful because it's just this beautifully blended pastel rainbow of colors that just goes up this side of the canvas. I thought it was so, so beautiful. And I thought that their rendering style just really lent itself nicely to that. Um, I do actually like how these birds are rendered where I know when you're really up close like this, sometimes it's not totally clear exactly what you're looking at, but um, I thought that this kind of matched Josephine Wall's sort of watercolor style really nicely. I loved how beautifully I felt like her skin was blended. I thought that just the really soft muted colors and the overall approach to this was just really, really lovely. Um, when you get up here into her hair though, and actually with this, <clears throat> there's actually a bird of prey here. And I know we have just a little bit of glare going on, but this is one of those areas that I, this bird and kind of her hair up here, um, that I would have been interested to see them go in and clean up just a little bit. Like almost if they just would have taken the original computer charting and had someone go in and just tweak um, and just touch it up a little bit. Because I feel like the bird kind of gets lost in all of this in a way that I don't think that it does in the original artwork. And I mean, I just, I'm not sure about this particular set of colors, but I do like the pretty like reds and pinks that they have in here. And these feathers, I love them. I think that they are so, so pretty. These feathers in her hair, oh my gosh. I really, really love the effect of those a lot. Now, quite possibly one of my very favorite parts on this entire canvas is here in her robes. And again, I know we've got just a little bit of glare, but 
I am obsessed with how they did these beautiful pastels. I think it is so dreamy. I think that it just, oh my gosh, the colors that it communicates, the vibe is just like Josephine Wall's original artwork. This is so stunning. I love it. There are a couple of spots that, like I said, I almost wish that they just would have had someone go through and just touch up. Like, okay, here's an odd drill here. Let's connect this there. Let's do that. But overall, I thought this was just, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. <laughs> now, a couple of spots over here I just want to touch on briefly. I had really mixed feelings in general about kind of the butterflies and the bugs and the flying things that are down here in this bottom corner. Um, now, while this piece is designed to be looked at from more of a viewing distance, whereas we're just a couple of feet away from it, which by the way, I will share a picture later of this piece held back at more of a viewing distance so you can see, but um, there are some details in here that I feel like even when you pull back, they're not going to come together. So there in the original artwork, there are a couple of really adorable bumblebees right here, which I never would have known. Um, there are these really pretty, like wispy, like flower seeds over here. There's a dragonfly you can kind of see down here below this one. And then some of these butterflies get a little bit lost, but I don't, I don't mind them so much. I think that they still look pretty and you can tell what they are. But this is, this is just an area where I'm not totally sure how I feel about it. But, um, you know, honestly, the level of detail in this piece, like once you were to pull back a bit, then... I don't know if you're gonna notice that, you know, there's a bumblebee that's not very clear in the corner. Do you know what I mean? And then let's take a look up here in this section and corner. So this peacock feather I thought was really beautifully rendered here at the end, but it's very, it's a bit muddy for me in here. Uh, but that's more of a personal preference thing because I think that this isn't that far from her original artwork, you know, it's not super detailed and crisp in her original artwork, but I don't know, it's a tiny bit muddy for me there. Now up here in this top left corner, I thought that they did a fantastic job, actually. <laughs> I really love how they've rendered the fish, these flying fish, and then the seagulls up here. And I love the colors that they've chosen in here for the waves. I think it's really really beautiful and water is not always easy to render and this just works this really 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 works for me and i'm happy with the colors i'm happy with the rendering i think it looks so nice like both up close and when you pull further away speaking of let's go ahead and pull back and take a look at this as a whole again and chat about just one or two more things okay so here she is in all her glory again but I, I had mentioned before that something I wanted to be sure to do was to give you guys a look at what this would look like from a true viewing distance, which is how art is, diamond paintings are intended to be viewed. Um, the idea being that if this were a piece that were hanging on your wall, you're not going to be standing, you know, two, three feet from it to look at it. No, you're going to step back six, seven, eight feet so that you're able to look at it on the whole. And so just to give you guys that additional perspective, because right now you're maybe three or four feet from it, um, I'm gonna insert a picture here of this at more of a viewing distance so you can see what it looks like. And then just for sake of posterity and in the interest of being helpful, I'm gonna put up her Josephine Wall's original artwork here so you can take a look at that again as well. So, a project like this, as far as what my overall thoughts are on it, um, I am definitely going to recommend that if this sort of project appeals to you, this is a really fantastic option. And what I mean by that is that if you are ready to tackle a long-term, large-scale project and ready to just take on the mental load that goes with that if you're if you like lots of confetti because there's very little color blocking in this piece in general which 
275 colors, that's not shocking. <laughs> but if, if this sort of project sounds like it would appeal to you, this is such a great option. Overall, I just had such a positive experience with diamond painting Deutschland all around, both with them as a company and their customer service, as well as with the whole process of working on this canvas. Um, I, quite frankly, I'm sure that I will order one of these giant Josephine wall projects from them again, because there's something that really is fun and fascinating for me about working with this many colors and seeing how it turns out and how close we feel like it is to Josephine Wall's original artwork. So I would love to hear your thoughts though. I, like I said, I think so much of this is going to come down to your personal taste and style. And if it's not for you, that's completely fine. And if it is, then perfect. Here's another diamond painting company and kit option for you. <laughs> diamond Painting Deutschland has a lot of different Josephine Wall canvases licensed. They do also offer kits and round drills, which I have not had the chance to try yet. Maybe that'll be my next one. <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. But um, I will be sure to link to their shop below, of course. And if this particular kit is not in stock at the time that you go to look at it, um, just keep checking back on their shop. They seem to restock frequently. You could probably email them and ask, you know, when it will be coming back into stock and hopefully they'll be able to help you out with that. <laughs> if you're interested in seeing the comparison project that I did with this piece from two different companies, um, I'll be sure to link to that playlist below. But like I said, I really just wanted to give a piece this beautiful the chance to just stand and shine on its own because it is glorious. It is stunning. It deserves to have its time by itself in the spotlight. So I hope that this video was really helpful for you and helpful for you deciding if this is something that you might want to work on for yourself. If you have any questions whatsoever, of course, I'm happy to help. Please just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and coming along on this journey with me. It was so fun and I'd be so curious to hear if a project like this is something that you have taken on or are thinking of taking on in the future. All right, my friends, I'll go ahead and leave it there. Thank you again for watching. And if you're not already subscribed and wanna see more diamond painting content like this, including I'm sure more projects from this company in the future, please feel free to subscribe and you can hit the bell to be notified when I share new videos. All right, my friends, thank you again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.